Welcome to Lesson 4, Multidisciplinary Health Management for Kleinfelter Syndrome, Identifying, Characterizing, and Managing an Underdiagnosed Condition with Serious Consequences. My name is Sharon Close, and I'm from Emory University. Lesson 4 focuses on a discussion of the importance of a multidisciplinary approach to managing the overall health of adults with KS. Due to the many intertwined comorbidities that complicate morbidity and increase mortality risk for those with KS, they need continued specialized medical management throughout their lives. Gravolt et al. specifically called for creating multidisciplinary clinics worldwide to care for individuals with KS throughout their lives. AXIS responded to this call by creating the ACRC, or the AXIS Clinic and Research Consortium cgenetic.org forward slash clinics for a listing of the 14 clinics across the U.S. and Canada. We collaborate, share resources, meet to discuss important topics, and explore opportunities to participate in joint research projects. Care for adults with KS may include a wide range of providers, including general practitioners, infertility specialists, urology, endocrinologists, cardiologists, psychologists, psychiatrists, and other mental health professionals, genetic counselors, dietitians, and social workers. Although there currently exist no standardized guidelines for follow-up care for people with KS, we offer the following recommendations from recent literature. Upon initial evaluation on the physical examination, be sure to measure blood pressure, height and weight, measure waist circumference, evaluate the testes in terms of volume and also texture, evaluate for the presence of gynecomastia and perhaps lipomastia and distinguish between the two. If there is breast tissue, palpation of that breast tissue for potential malignancy, evaluation for the presence of varicose veins, and also a body mass index measurement. Medical and mental health discussions should also be included, uh, which would include overall well-being, what their physical activity and energy levels are. If fatigue is present, uh, be sure to screen for sleep apnea, other sleep disorders, iron deficiency anemia risk, systematic illness, and hypogonadism. Be sure to take a thorough history to identify symptoms of autoimmune disorders with appropriate evaluation as needed. Also check for sexual activity and libido. This may also be a time to discuss any issues with gender identity or sexual orientation. Socioeconomic situation um, is also an important assessment and of course screening with the PHQ-9 to screen for depression. Also, on initial evaluation, checking baseline lab tests, including confirmation of karyotype if necessary, the testing for sex hormones, including testosterone, estrogen, sex hormone binding globulin, FSH and LH, fasting glucose, lipids, AST, ALT, and hemoglobin A1C, thyroid status, hemoglobin and hematocrit, measure vitamin D status, and iron levels if fatigue is present. Additional tests to be considered may be bone densitometry uh, by DEXA scan or electrocardiography if this is deemed necessary. Then it's the time for a discussion of KS and its management with the patient, including the potential for testosterone replacement therapy. A discussion of TRT options and initiation is warranted. Information about KS as a condition, as well as how to find support in peer groups for communication and support. Counseling around venous disease if needed. Counseling around nutrition and exercise, diabetes prevention and weight management programs, as well as counseling around smoking sensation if needed. We must also think about the potential referrals that we would make based on our clinical data and on the risks that a patient presents. And these include referrals for a fertility clinic, certainly before starting long-term testosterone replacement therapy, or when there is a desire to talk about or plan to have a child in the future. 
a plastic surgeon for collect- correction of gynecomastia if required, a psychologist, cardiologist, endocrinologist, neurologist, urologist, medical geneticist and genetic counselor, a dentist, dietitian, social worker, diabetes prevention or weight management program, physical therapist or orthopedist if flat feet, elbow differences such as hyperextensibility or joint instability are causing pain, limiting activities, or affecting motor coordination. Sleep specialists may also be referral to rule out sleep apnea, especially if fatigue is present, and then neurodevelopmental or educational evaluation for young adults. Every three months and then annually thereafter, on physical examination, be sure to check and record blood pressure, height and weight, waist circumference, and evaluation again for the presence of gynecomastia with palpation of the breast tissue for potential malignancy. Medical and mental health discussion continues with asking about overall well being, their physical activity and energy level. Um, if fatigue is present or new onset, be sure to screen for sleep apnea or other sleep disorders, possibly iron deficiency anemia, other systemic illness, uh, and hypogonadism. Be sure to perform a thorough history to identify symptoms of autoimmune disorders with appropriate evaluation as required. Sexual activity and libido is an important conversation here as well as socioeconomic situation. Uh, Giving information about support groups um, is very good at this visit, including uh, and counseling around venous disease if needed, counseling around nutrition and exercise with recommendation of a diabetes prevention program or weight management program if needed. Still at the three-month visit and then annually after the first year is to check with lab tests the sex hormone value levels, fasting glucose lipids, liver uh, enzymes, and hemoglobin A1C, thyroid status, hemoglobin and hematocrit, and then iron levels if fatigue is present. Once again, in your um, considerations for potential referrals may be a referral to the fertility clinic or any of these specialists that you can see listed below. Every second to every 10th year, um, tests that you want to include in these intervals are bone densitometry uh, by DEXA scan, also checking vitamin D status and echocardiography if this is necessary. And then throughout life, dental care is very important. Early and routine dental care by a dental team aware of the man's KS diagnosis should include dental radiographs, which are more effective than oral inspection in establishing a diagnosis of torodontism. Torodontism is found in molar teeth, where the body of the tooth and pulp chamber is enlarged vertically at the expense of the root. So there are risks of dental disease with uh, when torodontism is present. Now moving on to testosterone replacement therapy, Gravolt et al. call testosterone replacement therapy or TRT a cornerstone of proper treatment for KS patients. These experts call for lifelong TRT to prevent comorbid conditions such as diabetes, metabolic syndrome, and osteoporosis, despite lack of clear evidence of efficacy in KS patients. They also caution, however, that large observational and randomized control studies are still required to evaluate the efficacy and safety of TRT throughout life stages, and particularly during the middle age and beyond. Before initiating TRT, providers should consider screening for thrombophilia, a diagnostic echocardiogram to check for cardiac structural abnormalities, and referral to a urologist or fertility specialist to discuss fertility options, including testicular sperm extraction and intracytoplasmic sperm injection if the person wants or may want the potential to father biological children in the future. High blood pressure and other cardiovascular disease risk factors uh, 
must be considered because TRT may increase blood pressure that can lead to an increased risk of other major cardiovascular events. Obtain baseline blood pressures and, if needed, ensure adequate control prior to initiating treatment. Continue monitoring blood pressure, hematocrit, and other cardiovascular risks, including lipid levels, and adjust treatment as needed throughout the course of therapy. Venous thromboembolism, including deep vein thrombosis and pulmonary embolism, have been reported in patients using testosterone products. The increase of VTE in those with KS adds to the concern. Throughout the course of therapy, monitor for acute shortness of breath, a sign of PE, or pain, edema, warmth, and erythema in the lower extremities, signs of DVT. Evaluate symptoms as they arise, and if DVT or PE is suspected, discontinue TRT to further diagnose and manage the patient's DVT or PE. Polycythemia, uh, since TRT may increase hematocrit, this may increase of thromboembolic events. The FDA recommends that if the hematocrit is 48 or higher, either reduce the testosterone dose or bleed the patient. Uh, testosterone therapy does not increase the risk of prostate cancer, but if prostate cancer is suspected, stop the TRT. TRT is contraindicated for those with breast cancer or prostate cancer, a prostate nodule or induration, or a prostate-specific antigen or the PSA above 4 nanograms per milliliter or above 3 nanograms per milliliter in those at high risk for prostate cancer. Screen patients for prostate cancer prior to starting TRT and continue monitoring PSA and hematocrit throughout the course of treatment. Benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Monitor symptoms throughout the course of TRT, although if serum T level is within the normal range, there is no more risk than in non-KS men. Cardiac, renal, or hepatic disease. TRT can cause sodium and water retention, which can lead to serious complications in those with cardiac, renal, or hepatic disease. If a patient experiences edema, discontinue TRT and consider diuretic therapy. TRT can also increase the risk or severity of sleep apnea in some, especially those with risk factors like obesity or chronic lung disease. For those with severe obstructive or sleep apnea, address these issues prior to starting TRT. Most complications are a class effect based on dose and level attained. Additional guidelines for monitoring TRT can be assessed at this website. Other TRT considerations uh, include normalize LH and FSH levels, although not all reach the goal of a normal range of FSH. Normalizing in the mid-normal range because many are undertreated and some are overtreated. Pay attention to the patient's symptoms. TRT may normalize other androgen responsive tissues, including fat and muscle mass. Providers may estimate fat and muscle mass with a whole body DEXA scan and work to assess changes in libido and energy with patient reported outcome measures. While all formulations show clinical response, providers typically choose therapies based on patient preference, pharmacokinetic profile, and treatment burden, and ability to comply with treatment, and of course, cost. The next slides have the testosterone forms, dosages, advantages, and disadvantages, and please use these for your reference. Testosterone undecanate or Jatenzo is an oral capsule in three different dosages, 158, 198, and 237 milligrams. The starting dose, um, 237 milligrams orally, twice a day, morning and evening, with food is recommended. Adjust the dose within a range of 158 milligrams twice daily and 396 milligrams twice daily 
based on serum testosterone concentration monitoring per instructions. The advantages of this medication is that it is less invasive administration because it's oral, but there are many disadvantages as well. Potential for poor adherence because of the twice daily dosing. This can also cause blood pressure increases that can increase the risk of major adverse cardiovascular events, requiring adequate blood pressure control prior to initiation and continued monitoring and control, as well as cardiovascular risk assessment prior to treatment and continued monitoring and overall risk-benefit analysis. There are reports of depression and suicidal ideation in clinical trials with this medication. The most important adverse reaction include incidents less than 2%. Um, these include polycythemia, diarrhea, dyspepsia, eructation, peripheral edema, nausea, increased hematocrit, headache, prostatomegaly, and hypertension. Buckle testosterone system, also known as Striant, is a buckle tablet, 30 milligrams per buckle system. The adult do dosing involves one buccal system applied to the gums twice daily, morning and evening, about 12 hours apart. Monitor serum testosterone concentrations to ensure proper dosing per instructions. The advantage of this form of testosterone is that it normalizes levels within about 24 hours and is also a less invasive administration. The disadvantages include potential for poor adherence because it requires twice daily dosing. The most common adverse events, and the incidence is less than 1%, is gum or mouth irritation, bitter taste, gum pain, gum tenderness, headache, gum edema, taste perversion, uh, and in almost 33% of subjects experience gingivitis in a long-term extension study. Patients must regularly inspect their gums where they apply Striant. It is one of the most expensive options with the average monthly cost of $724 calculated from the common dose. Another form of testosterone is the testosterone nasal gel, Natesto, intranasal gel, meter dose pump at 5.5 milligrams per pump. The adult dosing is two pumps, one per nostril, three times a day. The advantages of this form of testosterone is that, once again, it is less invasive because it is sprayed into the nose, and there is less risk of unintentional transfer to women and children. Disadvantages include potential for poor adherence because of the three times daily dosing. It is not recommended for use in patients with chronic nasal conditions or alterations in nasal anatomy. The most common adverse events are increased PSA, headache, rhinorrhea, epistaxis, nasal discomfort, nasopharyngitis, bronchitis, upper respiratory tract infection, sinusitis, and nasal scabbing. It is very expensive, still with an average monthly cost of almost $700 calculated from the common dose. Another form of testosterone is the transdermal testosterone gel. The adult dosing is to apply to a clean, dry, intact skin that can be covered fully by clothing. The advantages are that it mimics the circadian variations in testosterone levels. There is a good clinical response. There's no visible patch. The gel dries quickly. There is usually good compliance, and there's an ease of dose titration. The disadvantages include normal serum testosterone levels are not achieved in all hypogonadal males. There is risk of secondary exposure to testosterone in children, leading to the risk of virilization. Providers must advise patients to strictly adhere to recommended instructions for use. Ensure that other family members avoid contact with the product as well with unwashed or unclothed application sites. Requires careful application and attention to precautions in storage, application, application site coverage, hand washing, and product disposal. And then there are restrictions on bathing and swimming. 
more on transdermal gels. You see here we have Testim, uh, Volgexo, Androgel, um, Androgel 1%, and then Androgel 1.62%, and then for Testa, which is 2% testosterone. Um, I don't want to burden you by reading each of the different dosing and most common adverse effects, but this slide in and of itself would be a good reference uh, for your practice, either printing off the slide or keeping it in, in a notebook. Transdermal 2% testosterone solution or Axeron is a meter dose pump 30 milligrams testosterone pump, uh, pump or twist. The adult dosing starts at 60 milligrams with two pumps or twists applied once daily to the axilla, preferably at the same time each morning to a clean, dry, intact skin. Adjust the dose based on serum testosterone concentration monitoring per instructions. The advantages of this form is that it mimics circadian variations in testosterone levels. There is a good clinical response, no visible patch, good compliance, and ease of dose titration. The disadvantages include risk of secondary exposure to testosterone in children, leading to risk of virilization. Providers must advise patients to strictly adhere to recommended instructions for use. Ensure other family members avoid contact with the product, as well as with unwashed or unclothed application sites. This requires careful application and attention to precautions in storage, application, application site coverage, hand washing, and product disposal. Common adverse events with an incidence of greater than 4% include application site irritation, application site erythema, headache, increased hematocrit, diarrhea, vomiting, and increased PSA. Post-marketing adverse reactions um, have included myocardial infarction, stroke, and venous thromboembolism. This is also an expensive um, medication with the average monthly cost of around $630. Androderm, um, the adult dosing is one patch, this, this is a patch, at two or four milligrams applied nightly for 24 hours to dry intact skin of the back, abdomen, upper thighs, or arm, rotating the application site with an interval of seven days for each site. The advantages of this form of testosterone mimics circadian variations in testosterone levels, it is more affordable than all options except intramuscular injections with an average monthly cost of nearly $200. And the disadvantages include more common adverse reaction with an incidence greater than 3%, application site reactions, skin pain, potential for skin burns at application site during magnetic resonance imaging, and potential for poor adherence. And then there are testosterone injections, long-lasting, subcutaneous. Uh, testosterone and anthate, 50 to 100 milligrams weekly. The application um, site is auto-injector through subcutaneous fat in the abdomen. And the disadvantages increase blood pressure. There are also long-lasting intramuscular injections, and this includes testosterone enanthate, testosterone cypionate, and a mixture of testosterone esters of propionate, uh, can I say this, phenylpropionate, isoproate, and deconate, uh, which is not available in the United States. So you can see here the typical dosage rates for each of those preparations. Uh, application sites can be self-injection or buttocks. Um, disadvantages include fluctuating serum testosterone levels, um, the, ne the necessity of a 21-gauge needle needed for long-acting esters. Extra-long-lasting uh, intramuscular injections include 
um, testosterone undecrinate, and then which is also not available in the United States, and testosterone undecrinate called Avid, also not available in the United States. You can see the typical dose ranges here um, for the Nibido is a thousand milligrams, um, where the Avid is 750. Applications are deep in the gluteal medius only, and the injection is associated with pulmonary oil microembolism, or POM, and restricted access in the United States. Um, one big disadvantage to the patient is that a trocar is needed for extra long-acting esters, and these are very, very large and, uh, I'm sure, uncomfortable injections. This concludes our section on multidisciplinary approaches to the management in the overall health of adults with KS. These are some references on the last two slides. Thank you.